everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and today is the day. It's Nintendo Direct Day, and yes, later today we will be reacting live to that Nintendo Direct. The stream is already set up. In fact, I'll put a link at the very top of the description below for you guys to go set up your notifications to watch our live reaction. We'll be going up roughly an hour ahead of time uh, so we can answer all of your questions and kind of get hyped together, hopefully responsibly hyped. Uh, heading into the beginning and start of that direct it's a 40 minute beast but that doesn't mean the news stops and the reason we left the nintendo direct logo up behind me is because some of this stuff might actually come out today we have some interesting stuff here for you uh we first off get a our first real look at the switch oled now we had a look where it was from a phone shot in a retail store, but now someone in Japan, a YouTuber in particular, has unboxed it, and now we get some actual close-up gameplay look here. It's not, in my opinion, the greatest um, comparison, uh, but I don't really think that was the point of the video. It was more of an unboxing and showcase video. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a little bit of a look at that footage. Uh, beyond all of that, we have all these rumors. It's Rumor City. Obviously, with a direct on the horizon, some of the old rumors are cropping back up, but with new twists. Emily Rogers is speaking out on multiple things. Emily Rogers, known as one of the best in Nintendo insiders maybe ever, uh, is speaking up on things she knows about Nintendo Switch Online and the different platforms that are going to be coming to it, including one that hasn't even been speculated about yet. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, she gives updates as well on other things. Things like Metroid Prime. You heard me. Not Metroid Prime Trilogy. Metroid Prime. Very, very interesting there. Also, uh, we get to visit a third-party game that's been rumored to be coming to Switch for over a year, but hasn't really had any updates about it. Uh, but the person who's been at the forefront of a lot of Capcom-related leaks uh, has come forward to release more details about it. Again, there's no guarantee any of this stuff is actually talked about at the Direct today, but this is stuff that we are now getting some rumored updates for. So grab your tinfoil hats, which... Dang it, I keep forgetting to grab my tinfoil hat. Where is it? Oh my gosh, one second. One second. Oh, tinfoil hat. Hattie, come here. Where are you? What is going on? Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. Grab your tinfoil hats, folks. And buckle up. By the way, we're giving away a Switch OLED. So, uh, before we get to the rumors and all that, uh, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED system, you got to be subscribed to the channel and then show up at a live stream we do next week. But let's just start with subscribing today, worrying about the direct, and then we'll get to how we'll be announcing the winner later. All right, so our first story comes from a Japanese YouTube channel, which I can't pronounce. Uh, they do have 10 million subscribers, though. So it's quite a big channel, and chances are they've actually probably partnered up with Nintendo to get this early access and first unboxing look. This does happen, I expect. Next week, we'll probably have some U.S. YouTubers and outlets like IGN being able to do unboxings as well, and they might even do better comparisons at that time. Um, but we actually get to see it in action, and as you're seeing here, uh, a number of games are shown off. There's a focus on Smash Bros., of course. Uh, I, I think that it uh, looks fine for what it is, um, th there's a couple shots where you can kind of see it, um, not really directly on, but you can kind of notice the screen does look more vibrant and brighter than the Switch Lite and base Nintendo Switch, but it, it, it's not a very good look or comparison. Again, I don't know that that was the point. Uh, they go over other things that show how the dock can fold almost all the way down to flat with the table, but not quite. So you can get kind of that slight angle up, uh, if that's an angle you prefer, depending on your sitting arrangement or play style. Uh, maybe you do want to go down and look at it like this, like we would angled, but you don't want to hold it. You know, there's, there's just more options here. Um, he looks at the dock, although he breaks the back door off the dock. I think this might actually be a common issue some people have with the new dock that have used the old one, because the old dock folds down from the top down. This one folds from the bottom up. Uh, so if you go into it trying to fold it from the top down, you're just going to snap it off and... I don't know if he actually literally broke it or if it just came off and it'll snap right back in. Uh, but yeah, it, it's definitely a, an interesting look, at least at the Switch. Again, the Switch OLED uh, comes out on October 8th. We are giving away one, and I am going to be doing a much more in-depth 
um, one. We're not, we not only take a look at all, you know, what it looks like on the outside in comparison and all that. We'll actually take apart the systems as well um, to a certain degree. I don't know if I'm going to dig all the way down to the panel level. Uh, I have heard some people do actually have questions about the OLED panel, what kind of panel it is. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to figure that out. And if I have to tear down all the way to the panel level to figure that out, uh, we did get some additional information in the safety uh, updates on Nintendo Switch, uh, uh, Nintendo Switch's uh, support page, by the way. Uh, and it did mention uh, one interesting thing I'd like to bring up that's just about the OLED model. And that's that there's a thin film on there that you're not supposed to remove. Um, so, yes, there will be something that you technically could pick at and peel off. But if you do that, you're going to break your switch. How this is going to affect using screen protectors, I don't think it'll be a big deal. We've seen thin films like this on OLED panels before. Uh, so I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's just going to come off like you're taking off a normal screen protector. You'd probably have to work at it. That thin film, I think, is there to help disperse things a bit and maybe uh, not have as bad a burn-in. There's also a note in there about burn-in and that if you have a Switch OLED, you shouldn't turn off the automatic sleep function. Basically, some people like to leave their Switch on and just sitting on the home screen. Don't do that because it'll burn in. Um, so, like, they, you know, they have automatic sleep functions to deal with that. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's a brief look at Switch OLED, uh, at least from Japan. Now, here is where we got to take off the Nintendo Prime hat, which, by the way, you can get at our merch store down in the description. It's the Streamlabs merch store, by the way. I know there's multiple stores, but that's the one where you can get that. And we got to go ahead and put on our tinfoil hats because it's rumor time. And these rumors are pretty insane. So first off, let's get to the Prime Trilogy potential rumor here coming from Emily Rogers. And she put this out on Twitter. She said, reply to Prime Trilogy. Last I heard, Nintendo was busy working on Metroid Prime 1 to celebrate the game's 20th anniversary in 2022. I'm not sure if we're getting a trilogy or just a re-release of the first game. I'm leaning toward the latter, but I hope we get the former. So we've had for a long time rumor that Metroid Prime Trilogy HD has been done, but maybe they scrapped the idea of doing an HD trilogy and are focusing on individual game releases. And if they do that, it does raise my expectations for what this is. In the past, I just thought, take the current trilogy, throw it in HD with Switch controls and call it a day. But maybe they're going to put more work into it than that. And it's going to get more of a remastering treatment. Think Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition style treatment. So Metroid Prime Definitive Edition, where the visuals actually are notably improved to a point that it does look you know, almost fundamentally different than the original release. That's something I would expect if they're just going to do an individual game instead of giving us that trilogy remaster. So again, this is what Emily Rogers is saying. It is a rumor. No guarantee this is even talked about tomorrow, by the way. She does know 2022. That gives us a whole year for them at this point. You talk about it, but yeah, this is just a rumor from Emily Rogers, but her rumors don't stop there because she also goes into the Nintendo Switch online service, which we all know about the Game Boy, uh, Game Boy slash Game Boy Color and N64 stuff. Uh, but here's what she said. Game Boy slash Game Boy Color and N64 and at least one other system. She says coming to Nintendo Switch online. That said, I don't know if they'll get announced and released at the same time. So you should temper your expectations. She's not saying all these platforms are being announced tomorrow or all of them are going to come out at the same time, but they are coming and they are coming up quickly. Um, and she says, Nintendo Switch Online's library is finally reaching its potential. I just wish it didn't take five years to add new systems. And then it said, Nintendo Switch Online is basically getting a trio of systems that were all popular in the 90s. So I keep thinking back, popular in the 90s. Well, that would disclude Game Boy Advance because Game Boy Advance was in the 2000s. That would also exclude GameCube, because GameCube was in the 2000s. Now, we already have SNES that was also part of the 90s, but we already have that. The only other 90s platforms were N64 and then, obviously, Game Boy Color. But she notes in a reply to somebody else that Nintendo considers Game Boy and Game Boy Color to be the same generation, so that's not what she's referencing here. She's referencing another system popular in the 90s. And some of you might be thinking, well, if this is Nintendo, it's Virtual Boy. But she says popular. Virtual Boy was never popular, so I don't think it's that. You start thinking about popular in the 90s, you start thinking about some old rumors that have cropped up. I start to start leaning towards the fact that Sega Genesis might be a platform added to the Switch. Now, we know that Sega and Nintendo are kind of like this. I mean, even games like Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta is owned by Sega. We talk about Platinum, Platinum doesn't own Bayonetta, Sega does. So... 
you got that. You got Sonic and Mario at the Olympic Games. Obviously, we were getting all the Sonic games, including the brand new one next year. I'm starting to see that potentially they might be willing to work with Nintendo to release Sega Genesis on the Switch. Now, that's speculation on my part. Emily Rogers does not say it's that platform. But she said three platforms popular in the 90s. Well, Game Boy N64, that checks. That, 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 that works. But Virtual Boy wasn't popular. Nintendo didn't have another popular platform in the 90s. Well, besides SNES, and we already have that. So, Genesis? That's the only one I could think of that was actually popular in the 90s. Now, this obviously is still all tinfoil hat rumors, all that jazz. Um, I can't verify any of this stuff, but that is what she is saying. But the rumors don't stop there because, well... Dust Golem has spoken up. For those who don't know who Dust Golem is, he is a very popular Capcom leaker. He has been leaking information from Capcom for quite a long time. Call him a Capcom insider if you would like. Um, he leaked a whole bunch of stuff about Res the last Resident Evil Village game before it came out, including its name before it was ever announced. Um, he leaked a bunch of stuff about Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2 long before those games were even unveiled. He's been busy leaking stuff for a long time. And one thing we got out of a data mine hack situation was this Resident Evil Outbreak, Resident Evil Outrage. It's kind of had two different names. Game that was coming to Nintendo Switch potentially exclusively with a massive budget. And Dust Golem has been on top of covering it for a while, but he's been quite silent on it. Until now, because obviously we have a direct, and so he's being pressed on, hey, is this where we finally hear about this game? And here's what he said in a very long Twitter thread. Uh, so buckle up. Uh, he said, so people keep asking me if Resident Evil Outrage, or whatever it ends up being called, note it's been called Outbreak Outrage, um, lots of different naming conventions potentially here, will be at tomorrow's Nintendo Direct. The honest answer is, I don't know. So again, you know, we got the tinfoil hat on, but remember... He's not saying that we are getting this game at the Direct. None of this stuff is guaranteed to be happening at the Direct. This is just new rumors that might happen at the Direct, but also might not. Uh, so he goes, but I have some things I want to talk about, speculate, and give my reasoning on. So if interested in that, read on. So I talked about this before. This particular Resident Evil game has been an odd one for me in items in terms of hearing about it. I've heard minor things on the game over the longest period, since late 2017. I've known about the project for over four years now, but I've only ever gotten minor updates on it. One thing I am mighty positive of is this isn't a Capcom Division 1 lead project, but neither was you know, Revelations 1 and 2, which both were Nintendo ones that ended up getting ported later to other platforms. And those were both the lead devs, or T-O-S-E. So it doesn't really mean too much. Now, I have had it confirmed from a source Several months ago that I consider 100% reliable. They've never been wrong, but usually only give me breadcrumbs than whole details. Several months ago that Resident Evil Switch is a thing in development and Capcom had an RE game they wanted to announce for the 25th anniversary window that they hadn't yet. But at the time, the exact announcement window wasn't decided or concrete yet. I noticed Capcom kind of crammed their Switch releases all in summer close together, like they had something big to announce, and currently they have had almost nothing announced, which is unusual for them, or which is. I also noticed this time frame is similar to the Monster Hunter Rise stuff that was announced at a Nintendo Direct a week ahead of Tokyo Game Show. And again, this Direct's happening a week ahead of Tokyo Game Show. Uh, it then released the March after. Just similarly to be noted, I'd love for it to be here tomorrow, aka today, and I think it has a solid chance of showing up, but to see, this has been the Resident Evil game pre-announcement I've known the least reliably, I would think he meant reliably about. I'm very curious about it and anticipating seeing what does and doesn't pan out. Part of the fun of these things. So basically, he has heard from an extremely reliable source that yes, there is in fact a Resident Evil game being worked on uh, by uh, somebody for Switch. And yes, it is going to be something that's semi, um, you, know, you know, exclusive in some way or you know, timed exclusive, or something, right? But the point here is that there is something Resident Evil coming. I gotta take this off for some reason. Give me a little itchy head here. Come on, tinfoil hat. Uh, we're gonna go back to this one. Here's the thing. I want Resident Evil Outrage, Outbreak, whatever it is, end up, ends up being called, to come to Nintendo Switch. 
Um, I would love to see it announced now, and it does make sense. If you look at how they handle Monster Hunter Rise and Stories 2, now would be about the time to announce it if it's going to be a big March game for Nintendo Switch. And we've talked in the past, so maybe that March game is Splatoon 3 or this, but maybe it ends up being this. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm very curious because it's been rumored to be a massive budget game with at least the budget of Resident Evil 8, even if it's not made by the main Resident Evil team. So again, there's just a lot of things. Remember, it's supposed to be like Revelations 3, but then they didn't want to use the Revelations branding because you know that branding didn't sell super well from them. They want this to be its own, but still use some of the same characters. And So I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going out there about this game, but those are the big rumors today before the Direct. I wanted to get this video up before the Direct just in case this stuff is in the Direct. But even if none of these rumors are, it doesn't mean they're not true. So as always, hype responsibly. I know it's tough. It's the day of the Nintendo Direct. It's very hard to hype. I'm having a hard time hyping responsibly. I don't know how you guys are doing. Um, but I think uh, it's time that, uh, I don't know, maybe by the Nintendo Direct today, we'll launch our new merch line of hype responsibly. Uh, because it, <laughs> I think we all might need it, whether or not we're excited or disappointed by the upcoming Nintendo Direct. Now, we will have our, our pre-show and our post-show as well for a little bit. Uh, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. It has been a pleasure to make this video for you this morning. Hype responsibly, and I'll see you in the next one.